Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled, professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started today, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for the missing piece of the puzzle to grow your business? Well, I want to invite you to watch my free online training on how I went from hobbyist to celebrity wedding planner and how you can do it too. You will discover the puzzle pieces that will absolutely transform your business from hobbyist to like, hell yeah, I can do this full time. On puzzle piece one, I'm going to go all into personality. Puzzle piece two, how to keep the high quality clients happy. Puzzle piece three, I'm going to talk about what separates the good from the great. On four, best kept secrets to profitability and all about implementing the strategies. And five, If you're going to attract the best, come on, people, you got to be the best. And then I'm going to show you how to create the magic and put it all together for you and your clients. So don't wait another minute. Go on over to go.angelaprofit.com. That's go.angelaprofit, two F's and two T's, dot com. And watch my free videos and download my free workbooks that will take your business to the next level. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Prophet. I'm back for another episode of Weddings Unveiled, and thank you so much for joining me today. I am so, so super excited to have two guests with me today. Both amazing ladies are the hostesses of the Big Wedding Planning Podcast. So if you've never listened to it, you gotta tune in. So we'll tell you more in just a bit. So they are both certified wedding planners, business owners, entrepreneurs, podcast producers, hosts. So let's say I just have a lot in common with them. (laughs) It's Christy Matthews of Christy Matthews Events and Michelle Martinez of Allure Consulting. Welcome, ladies. Well, welcome, welcome. No, welcome. Wait a minute. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm so, you so weird on being on the other end. I feel like I need to do my intro. Yeah, I was sort of <laughs> waiting for Michelle to jump in with the usual. I'm like, wait, am I supposed song to go? And dance. Are you going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank you. Do, like, okay, so guys, for every anybody listening, these lovely ladies, they were in Nashville recently, and Woo! I got the opportunity to be on their podcast, which you'll get to listen to soon, and I was their first interview in Nashville, and I was so impressed because they, like, memorize all this stuff, and I'm like, shit, I don't memorize anything. Like, I got to have my notes, or I just, like, go off on, like, major tangents. So do your intro. Y'all do it real quick. Because Do it. You're so amazing at it. Yes. This is the one thing you were impressed by of us. And the then one everything thing. else in that office, Michelle and I were like, damn, she's really impressive. <laughs> so we'll take it. We'll take it. We're it. the best intro we've ever done right now. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, hear the music. <clears throat> Hello, hello, and welcome to the Big Wedding Planning Podcast, a show for anyone involved in planning a wedding. We want you to learn something valuable and be entertained at the same time. My name is Michelle Martinez. And I'm Christy Matthews. Thank you so much for joining us. That's pretty much it. Ta-da! And then I'm, and I'm like, something about like, like, how I don't have real pants on, or it's been a hell of a week, or oh, she's got mono, or I have mono, or Michelle will be like, I'm drinking whiskey. Like yeah. from that point, it's just downhill, and then, and then our kids on track, and then our kids inevitably interrupt us, and Christy's like waving them away, telling and them there's them like to eat a cat chewing on my microphone. Oh, yeah, it's God. just it, yeah. it devolves from there, and then after five or ten minutes, we'll get back on track with the guest or the topic, and. <laughs> 
as she said in the intro, it's for anyone involved in planning a wedding. So it's, we try to like imagine who's listening, but you probably know that's a kind of a hard game to play. It is. So we try to just be as like universal as possible when we're doing the podcast. Since when we we're giving out no all idea. our free advice <laughs> to all those people planning their weddings. Here's how you do it. Complimentary Here's- experience, peeps. <laughs> That's okay. See, she's got a much better way of saying that. Yeah. Complimentary experience. And we're just like, free shit, free shit over free here. Shit. <laughs> I, had this, I had this coach one time and he's like, so don't use the word cheaps, which I think I told y'all this. We have like these, these cuss word lists of like, these are bad words, not like real cuss words, but like, don't say cheap, say less expensive. Don't say budget, say allocate. Don't say ugly, say... Uh-huh. That's not complimentary. <laughs> like all kinds of, it, I don't know. It's just funny. Never say um, no. Yeah. Never say no. You say, have you considered? <laughs> so yeah. consider- Well, I can't do that, but here's what I can do. Exactly. Exactly. So for those um, of you listening who do not know Christy and Michelle, ladies, can you share with us a little bit about both of your backgrounds? Um, how'd you get into the in- industry and how'd you get together to do the podcast? Three questions, back to back. Three questions. Okay, um, I'm going to do two truths and a lie. So um, <laughs> beauty and age before beauty. Um, Love it. Uh, so I, Michelle, this is Michelle. Um, I started Allure Wedding Consulting and Event Planning uh, back in 2002 um, after having worked in the hotel industry for many years and planning my wedding. But at the time I was planning my wedding, this is a long time ago, you guys, okay? Um, This is when San Francisco was like, all of a sudden the internet and dot coms were like a new thing and everybody was on that internet. And then all of these businesses were just jumping and opening and like people were making lots of money. And then there was this dot com boom. Um, and I jumped on the bandwagon and was working at a dot com. I was working as an executive assistant. Um, and they were going through rounds of layoffs, which coincided with my now husband and I getting engaged. And so I was in my cubicle every day, tap, tap, tapping away on my uh, keyboard, planning my wedding eight hours a day. Really, really good at it. Making lots of calls, you know, reading through contracts, making spreadsheets, timelines, all of it going, God, I'm really good at this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And thinking, how the hell do other women at that time uh, plan their weddings when they're working full time. No um, shit. And then yeah, I she's got, like, I'm not even doing my job. And I'm not even working. I'm getting paid. I'm like by the skin of my teeth here, but uh, waiting to get laid <laughs> off. So the little light bulb went off and then I went online and found that uh, San Francisco State University at that time offered a wedding consultant certification program which was an extension of their, um, you know, uh, certified meeting planner, C- CMP program, mm-hmm. uh, specializing just in weddings and social events. So I signed myself up and I took that class who was taught by Miss Joyce Scardena Becker, who is what I call a drill sergeant of a wedding planner. Um, she is OG. She's, She's old school. Yeah. Since longer than it was an actual occupation. Um, and I think I'm blessed that I learned from her. Christy and I both did. And um, the, the class started out with 30 students in it. And after the first class, when she gave us her, what would you call it, Christy? Her, uh, her advice on, listen, if you're not serious about this, get out now because you won't take, get your money back. Mm-hmm. So after the first class with 30 of us in it, The next week, there was only 17 of us in the class. Wow. And after the whole four months, um, only seven of us passed the test and got our certification. So anyway, uh, that's how I started. And um, and just, you know, just went at it right away, uh, full time, because I did lose my job and I got my certification and I had a background in hospitality hotels, so I knew people. My father ran a limousine service back then. Um, so I had all that experience. Uh, and um, yeah, so here we are 16, almost 17 years later. Oh my God, I love it. It's so funny how 
So like my best friend, one of my best friends who makes cakes, he got laid off. He was in healthcare and he's like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do for money. And it was his daughter's birthday and he made her first one-year-old like birthday cake. And um, everyone's like, oh my God, this cake is amazing. Like, do you make cakes? And <laughs> he's like, no, but I guess I can. And that's how I can make money. And yeah, I mean, she's like, almost 30 now. Oh, so, wow. But he's like, be, getting laid off was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yes. He taught me how to be an entrepreneur and jump in and do what I love. And yeah, it's funny how that works sometimes. So what about you? Well, I, um, I started working for Michelle, basically. So okay. I was in San Francisco. I was an actress and waitress. I lived with a bunch of actors. We had we had this improv comedy troupe and we all knew oh. each other from college and we were very much like gypsy artist types living in San Francisco. You know, we barely scraped together enough money for rent, but we <laughs> always had plenty of two buck chuck and like we were performing all the time. Um, and I realized... Well, I realized a couple of things. One was that in San Francisco, if you're working at the right restaurant, you can actually make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started to see that half the waiters at this restaurant I was at, which was pretty high end, were career waiters, like in their 40s and 50s. And like they took their tips and they went home and they saved and they were, cho you know, they chose this career. And the rest of us um, took our tips and pretty much went to a bar right after work and party. Yeah. And so it got into that mode where I was like having a really, really great time. And like I said, I was performing a lot with my uh, troupe, but I kind of was wondering like, what am I actually going to do when I grow up? Because mm -hmm. I don't want to be a 50 year old uh, waiter at a steakhouse. Mm -hmm. So what happened was that we had to produce our own shows. In order to perform, we had to produce the show. That means like rent the space, the stage, the chairs, put them out, sweep it out, bring the concessions, sell the concessions. Like we didn't learn any of that when we went to drama school. So mm -hmm. it was a, a real like education and um, it was quick quick on that we learned as a troop that one person is going to do most of the work so that yep. everybody can actually perform and do the shows. And mm -hmm. I, maybe by default, but also just by my personality was that person. So I was sort of planning events before I knew I was planning events. Um, <laughs> and it's like, oh, this is in my wheelhouse. And we had to promote and we were printing flyers and we were like shilling on the corner, like, come seek this comedy show. I mean, it was a lot of work just for two hours of being funny on stage. And it was everything we wanted to do at the time. But at that same time, I think i like literally wrote down a list of like my, what my skills are as a 24 year old. Um, what, like what's on my pro pro and con list and what would that lead to as far as a career? Um, Cause I had a big fat, drama degree in my back pocket. And that does not get you a lot of job interviews. <laughs> <laughs> so I put together a resume. Um, I did a lot of research and I ended up reaching out to Michelle of Allure Wedding Consulting. I had no idea who she was, but her business and website looked cool. And I could kind of tell that she was like a one woman show rather than an office with a big team of people. And I thought maybe I can learn from her work for free for a while and see if this is something that I'm good at and that I could do. So that's how we met long story short. Um, so I started as an assistant and then she was mentoring me. She said, if you ever want to take on your own weddings under my business name and be a real planner with Allure, you need to get certified. So I went mm -hmm. to that same class that Michelle had gone to and it was pretty much the same thing with how many people actually graduated. Um, from it or we got our certificate. So I was like ready to go after that. And as soon as I had that certificate, I had clients of Michelle's that she was kind of overseeing my work with them, but I was their planner. And then after a few years of doing that, Michelle had to move to the East Coast and her business was in San Francisco. So I bought into it at that point and stayed and did it for as long as I was there, expanding it the way that I could which something that's really important to me is same sex weddings. And at the time in like 2008, 2009, California was legalizing and then 
taking it away and then giving it back and taking it away. And San Francisco had a bunch of stuff going on with that. So I tried to um, immerse myself in the education process of like what the laws are, what are gay people doing? How are they doing these celebrations? Why do they, you know, want them? And how can I help? So when it came time for me to move to Texas, I started Christy Matthews events because it didn't really make sense to take Michelle's business with me there. And Mm. now Michelle's back in the Bay Area. So after some triangle, (laughs) triangle moving around, it all is well in the world. And we both have our own one woman show businesses now. Um, And then a couple years ago, Michelle called me up with this crazy idea, idea, which was, well, she had some big ideas, but it, it got, I'm like a hard sell. I'm Mm -hmm. I'm like naturally skeptical and just sort of like, Oh, I don't know. I'm really busy. Let's distill this down into a very um, easy thing for me to wrap my brain around. And it, it went from like a big, like, website network, how, you know, working with clients from all over the, this idea of like connecting with people and getting business for ourselves through a different medium. And it, it got whittled into let's do a podcast. And then Michelle really like dove deep really quickly with all the like technical parts of like how to do this. Yeah. Cause we had no idea. I mean, we had no idea. All we knew is like a podcast means that you talk <laughs> and you record it and then you somehow get it out there. So Michelle took the lead and the, you know. Well, if there's anything I knew we could do is talk about weddings for fucking ever. Ever. It's just, it's just so easy to just talk and talk and talk about weddings. Because <laughs> there's, there's so much to a podcast. Like I could talk about weddings all day long, but I kind of didn't think anybody would want to listen, you know? Like, what are we putting out there that's of value? And then on top of that, how do we put it out there? How do we get on iTunes? How do we get on Stitcher? How do we get, you know, the kind of website that drives? I mean, we, it it just was a huge, it it felt like we're never going to get there. And we just did, we just did our second full year. Yay! Our two year anniversary. So over 120 episodes at this point, and we've never missed a Wednesday, which is huge. That's just (laughs) Bonkers. Yeah. So, so I want, so let's talk about that for a minute, like in terms of all the things that you do. So do you guys do it? Um, you do it once a week together or yeah, mostly together, uh, sometimes more than once a week, you know, it depends on um, who we're interviewing. So, okay. The, the, the way that we do it is most of the shows are interviews every once in a while to be just Christy and I talking about a specific topic. Mm -hmm. Um, But the last Wednesday of every single month is always a you ask, we answer episode. So we encourage our listeners to email us, to call our phone number, leave us a voicemail, to DM us on Instagram and send us their wedding planning questions or anything they might be struggling with um, or anything they want to share. Uh, that they need advice on. And so then we choose, um, we always answer them via email. Chris, Christy and I are, well, Christy's lately been a lot better about it than I have. I'm kind <laughs> of like flying by the skin of my teeth lately, but we always choose, um, you know, specific questions that we think are going to help the the broader audience and read those on the show with our answers and just kind of like discuss them. Like even if Christy's the one that answered the email, we'll read her answer, but I'll also kind of give my two cents and be like, oh, yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or mm, did you think about this? Right. Um, and those are by far the most popular episodes. Um, we just, we really, 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 really try hard and really genuinely love engaging with our listeners. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so the helping people part is where we can That's like, where we get off. Yeah, yeah. because <laughs> when, it, when it does get really crazy, like this is the fourth time, Angela, right now is the fourth time in the past seven days Michelle and I have recorded together. That's awesome. Um, and we have, it'll be like a backlog, you know, but that's a lot. Like my kids are downstairs attached to their iPads right now so I can fit this in. And, yeah. and want, I got one walking in right now asking <laughs> me a question when I told him not to. Yeah. We want to do this, but whenever we get, whenever I at least, and I can't speak for Michelle, but I think it's the same when, when I get just like, oh, we're not making hundreds of thousands of dollars doing this. Spoiler alert. Um, 
whatever. Hey, remember I'm, that one day you said we're making pennies a day, <laughs> pennies. Whenever I get, whenever I think that, I I will go to our email, our podcast email, and I'll answer a couple questions just to remember and remind myself that there's somebody listening in Sydney, Australia, who trusts us. People she's never met. She listens to us every week, and she trusts us enough to you know, email me a long email about her, how her father died recently. And she has uh, an uncle who wants to walk her down the aisle and her sister's being really weird about being a bride. I mean, like really going into some personal stuff yeah. and she's waiting for my answer and our answer. And, um, that makes it feel, and I, I mean, don't want to sound trite, but it makes it feel like we're putting something good into the universe. And it makes me feel Oh, no, better and more fulfilled right. about what we're doing. She's a crier, Angela. <laughs> well, and while, you know, let's be honest, like there's this whole formula out there. Um, give, 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 ask. And so for three years, when I started my podcast, I hired a branding manager and someone to help me do it and teach me how to do it. Um, really? Ever, yeah. I mean, wow. there, there was That's a good way of going about it. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, um, you know, and he's like, we're going to rinse, wash, repeat. We're going to use, we're going to have you do videos and then use your audio and then make it a book and then use it as blog content. And so that allowed me once I got going and once I understood and he's like, we're just going to give, 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 give. And I was like on a three year give, 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 because I was doing so many events and so many weddings. Um, and revenue wise was fine until my dad got cancer and my sister got ALS in the same year. And I'm like, I have to figure out how to make money a different way, but still feel good about it and still give back. Mm -hmm. And so your time suddenly got much more. Precious. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And, and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. And I'm going to have to pick and choose the clients that are the best for me and the best for our business model and people who want full service for planning and design, not just a 30 day day of, which we all know that doesn't really fucking exist. But anyway, it's just, um, it's like God forced me and put at the time, I'm like, God, why? I mean, why does God do this to good people? I don't understand who are such hard workers and contributors to the world and having kids and grandkids. And it's like, you don't understand everything. But for me personally, it probably saved my life in the future because I was probably going to stroke out from working so much. Yeah. Didn't sleep, didn't, you know, just didn't take care of myself. And so I learned like, if you don't take care of you, you how the hell are you going to take care of anybody else? So yep. I had a new coach at the time and he's like, my God, Angela, you have so much content. Like I don't even really know where to start start with you. Like you could monetize the podcast and you could monetize your YouTube videos and you can sell your books. Like I was just giving everything away for free, as he would say. However, what I didn't realize until that three years later is that I had built up an audience and a library of a lot of really good stories, like you said, that was helping people. And so once I started to put out there like, hey, if you want to sponsor something or if you have something that you would like to get out there, and it's like, I don't like to ask for money for stuff like that. If I believe in something like Dropbox or, you know, an app, then I'm going to talk about it and tell everybody about it, regardless if I make a penny or not. But my coach was like, you're not going to talk about anything unless there's an investment paid. on their part. And yeah. he's like, this, you're going to, and, and if you don't want to ask for the money, then, which is, I'm not good at that. Um, your accountant's going to do it or somebody else is going to do it. And so I had to outsource that because I'm not good. I just, I just want to help people have a good time and like make shit happen. And I don't want to talk about money. I don't want to deal with it. So it's, it has worked best for me for someone else to do that, who is good at that and who, but they actually explain the value to people of our listeners, our followers, our audience, the consistency. And so while right now you might be like, oh, you know, we're just, we're not monetizing and making money. I mean, girls, there's people that make seven figures annually by helping others and putting their podcast, but you have to build up that audience. And I would say, you know, when you come around year three, and you start asking for the business, um, which is hard for those of us who just want to help, you're going to get it because you have built up this amazing library of kick-ass content. So 
kudos. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, and it's, and it's not like we're not trying to make money. It's sure. it's the spend money to make money totally. part of it, and we're getting there. We're inching there. I think it, it it surprised us both that we did this for two two years and we lasted this long, and mm-hmm. like still have so much content and so much to talk about. But one thing that we that we have rolled out that has been successful so far, and I hope we can do more of it, so much more in 2019, is consulting one on one with listeners when they do want our attention for a full two hours. Mm -hmm. Um, Nobody would want that unless they had listened to several, maybe all of our episodes and already decided, I really like these chicks. They're speaking to me or they're speaking my language or they're speaking in a way that, you know, I can understand and wrap my brain around. So every time we get a consulting gig, which are these little one-offs, I mean, it takes two hours of our time. Um, and we're getting paid for it. And it's invaluable. We're doing it from home on our computer yeah. just like this. Yeah. Thank and it you. feels like, oh my gosh, I could do that all day. I could take two hour blocks of time all day long and just answer these people's questions in an organized, professional, experience-based way. So that is like morphed into its own side project on this. But I'm I'm hoping that we we can keep going along that track because that does feel like the next step with helping people. They get our full attention for that block of time and they can really go into the nitty gritty of what's going on with their wedding planning. Um, And I've talked to a mom, you know, a mother of a groom actually who listens to the podcast that way. And um, the wedding's actually in a couple of days. It's right before Christmas. And she emailed me again just two nights ago, not asking for anything, but just saying, you know, I finally finished the timeline based on all those notes you gave me when we were talking and I think it looks great and I can't wait to tell you how the day goes. And she just seemed really excited about everything. And that, 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 those are the kind of emails that are like, okay, we got to do more of this. Um, so getting the word out about that will be a goal for 2019, um, for sure. What would you say? I mean, there's, I, I remember when I first started my podcast there, I don't, I don't feel like there were a lot geared in the niche of wedding industry. Um, but I do feel like they're popping up. And so what would you say is like super just special and unique about y'all's podcast and, and how you all do it? Well, I think what's, what's unique and special about it is, and, and this is for, based on feedback that we've heard from our listeners is, um, one Christy and I's, Um, friendship and our relationship and um, the way that we speak uh, to our listener on the podcast, you know, we've, we've heard it many times where they've said, I feel like I have girlfriends with me on my run or in my car while I'm doing dishes or doing the laundry. And we're just, we're just shooting the shit about my wedding planning. And it's super fun. Um, Another thing is our engagement with our listeners and that we are actually, I mean, after the wedding, we get emails like you guys really helped me plan my wedding. Like, Aww. thank you so much. You, you, you really did help me. I don't know what I, w- I wouldn't have thought of these things. I would have, I wouldn't have fired that vendor. I wouldn't have thought about asking for that information in that contract. You know, I wouldn't have thought about using those colors together. Um, so, so, I mean, I think that, I think that in and of itself is, is what makes it that way. And I work so, so hard to, to, and we both do, um, to find subject matter, to find content that is not anything you're going to hear or read in a wedding magazine or blog, right? And you're not going to pick up your favorite wedding magazine and, you know, five trends for 2019. Like we don't give a shit about trends. We don't want to hear about trends. We've had guests talk about trends. That's fine. Cause we know some people do want to hear that, but we try so hard to bring such different content, anything having to do with plan a wedding last week. Was it last week, Christy? We, we released uh, last two weeks, a two part episode on a bride that wrote to us who asked a wedding question and she was in a polyamorous relationship. You know, she has her fiance uh, who's going to be her husband and she has her girlfriend who is uh, her partner and and she's in love with both of them. And And, they all live together. And they all live together. Um, We've had a sex therapist on the show. Uh, We've had a divorce attorney on the show. Money manager. We've had a finance coach. Um, A credit card guy. Oh yeah, credit card hacks. That's coming. (laughs) Um, So we try to make it, 
because you know how it is, all you out there in the wedding world. And when you were planning your wedding, if you did, everything at that time of your life, you were eating, breathing, sleeping, talking, wedding planning. That's all you wanted to hear about. Just like when you're pregnant with your first child, that's all you want to learn about. All about what's going to happen to my body. What's the baby going to do? So, you know, and us as wedding planners and Angela, you know, this, like that's, that's our thing. That's what we talk about. We want to see those pictures, you know, and yeah, that's that's a long answer, but that's, well, yes. To be like, we don't want to be another blog is what Michelle said is because we can Google, you know, how to do a, (laughs) I don't know, evergreen garland down the middle of a head table or, or how do I organize my guest list? And it'll come up with 75 different things, you, links you can click on. And some of them are going to have directly um, clashing information or answers that they give you. Mm-hmm. What's the average price of a wedding in America? 35 grand from this website, 12 grand from this website. What does average even mean? Who, who was consulted for this poll? What we tried to do was strip it down to if we do talk about guest lists and we do talk about garlands down the head table, but it's bookended every paragraph that is bookended with our own experience, you know, over 20 years under our belts together of working with people and and seeing what works and what looked like it was going to work and then actually didn't. And here's why. So there's a lot of like pitfalls and troubleshooting and, um, a lot of our opinions were try not to be shy about that. And one other thing, and Christy touched on this earlier, is that we are very, very big advo- advocates on um, being all inclusive, on talking to the LGBTQ community. We try very hard not to just say brides, right? Mm-hmm. It's not just brides. It's grooms. It's uh, transgender. It's, it's anyone in love and getting married. And now thankfully, you know, any two people in love can get married. And so we are talking to everyone, even polyamorous people. (laughs) We have polyamorous people. Unfortunately, not unfortunately, well, only two people can get married right now, but perhaps someday that law will change. I have to be honest. I've never heard that word in my life. <laughs> it's a pretty I'm, Bay Area word to, the, to fling around. <laughs> you listen to those episodes and you're going to be very educated. It's going to open up your eyes. Wow. And, and doing episodes like that with the sex therapist or, I mean, the polyamorous cup tr- truple, thruple. As They're my called a family. Said. Family, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and even some of the guests we've had that I think, I mean, we had a guy talk about event insurance. I thought it was going to be a snooze fest. Um, oh, not, I know. I mean, Everybody before talking me. to him. And that was over a year ago. We still get emails. I just listened to your episode about event insurance. Wedding I just insurance, got yeah. some wedding mm-hmm. insurance. I'm so glad I did. It really has put my, my parents are at ease. Like though our listeners prove us wrong, to, like in our, yeah. our just like prejudgments of an episode. We didn't know how the polyamory episode was going to go over. It's mm-hmm. some pretty touchy territory for yes, a, lot of people. a lot of people, very uncomfortable. And we have listeners from all over, you know, some mm-hmm. couple in Oklahoma City listening to this in the car or whatever while they're planning their wedding and they've, like you, have never heard the term or just like the idea is almost offensive. We, we don't know when we're putting it out there. So we just, we do what we can to be as authentic authentically ourselves. Like when Michelle was interviewing them, she was asking questions that you would ask or anybody else would ask. And is like, you know, I got to be honest with you. I don't think I could do it. Or do you all have sex together? That's a a really (laughs) big question. What's happening in that king size bed? You just have to listen to find out. (laughs) Yeah. We just (laughs) have to listen to find out. And we get emails. People say, you know, we've gotten many, several emails even about that episode. And it was only released a couple of weeks ago about, um, yeah. people being like, thank you so much. I have a wow. brother who's Polly or I did I'm this. In- yeah. 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 So we're, we are enlightened and we're better, more open-minded yeah. and more educated for doing the podcast. So we hope that the listeners take that away also. Yeah. What would you say? in all of the different things, is there one episode, one or two, where you're like, oh my God, everyone just was like, it, you're most popular? 
that was like, oh my God, blind spots. Thank you so much. We did one with, well, this was, this one stuck out to me and then Michelle, you should say for (laughs) you, but we did one and there's two actually, because we did one that got us into some trouble. Oh, you you have to tell. (laughs) Yeah, we got, that was a whole thing. But the one I'm talking about was with, actually was with my best friend who was her, she did the podcast about a month after her wedding and her mom had died basically during the wedding. I mean, she died like, she actually died a week after the wedding day, but she was in hospice. It was like, she has six months. No, she has three months. Okay. Maybe she'll make it to the wedding. Oh, she's definitely not going to, it was, it was horrific. It was so Aww. hard. And my best friend was this, like, she just was a pillar of like grace and, and strength. And she, I don't know how she did it. And she managed to be like happy on her wedding day and grieving, you know, the day before oh, and the day so after. Funny. And it just was, it was heart wrenching and she recorded with us and we called it the happiest sad day. And since that episode came out, the amount of emails that we've gotten about parents dying or, you know, struggling with uh, cancer or just big other life things that lead up Mm -hmm. to weddings. It's, and, and people mention this episode by name. And a lot of times people will email and say, please tell Lauren that I went through the same thing and that it was really wonderful to hear somebody talk about it or frame it in such a way. And I always Mm -hmm. forward her the emails and, and then she, you know, writes back or texts me like, thank you. And it's like, that's never going to end for her. So Mm -hmm. that she would even had like the peace of mind to open up about it. The experience on the podcast was and I knew when we were recording it that I would think it would be kind of an important episode for us, but yeah. the feedback afterwards was, you know, really touching. So it's so relatable. Yeah. And it's not something that's on, you know, style me pretty posts mm-hmm. right now. You know, it's not on those big blogs where <laughs> it's all just like smiling, beautiful, thin, white brides and grooms. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not. Yep. That's not what we're trying to do. So that would be mine. Michelle, Wait, you, you have... got back up. What'd you get in trouble for? I'm just interested. Oh, we, had a, we had a cake baker on one of my dear friends. Uh, it's one of our, ta- one of our most downloaded episodes. Yeah. yeah. Cause she has when a cake following. Stuff. She's like she's a superstar in the celebrity cake, cake baker. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so she had kind of her own people who like rabid fans of hers and other cake bakers all around the world. Um, so when we released the episode, she had a lot of her own people listening, which was great, but she was a very, she's very honest and Mm -hmm. she's a very good friend of mine. So we kind of got into this, like two girlfriends talking and we were talking about a specific wedding we had both worked on and it wasn't my wedding. I was there as an assistant, but it was her wedding. She did the cake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was like a six foot cake. Um, it was an eight foot cake. Yeah. And it had these like crazy stalks of orchids hanging off of it. And it was a, a beautiful work of art. Um, and of course it was fake, fake, fake. Cause well, you course. cannot, yeah, you can't build an eight foot cake out no. of actual cake. Okay. That's what that's people what, do now. Yes. Yeah. See it got, that's what we talked about. She talked about like all the work that went into it and how it was like typical Dallas. It takes a week. Yeah. Oh my God. It was, it, it was yeah. amazing. It wasn't like the clients were trying to fool anyone. They well, ate cake. They all ate cake while looking at this beautiful cake that hadn't been cut. It was not a magic act, right? Well, that's not why she got in trouble. No, but that was one of the things. That we, I got a letter of like, basically like, we're going to sue you because <gasps> one of the legal things in the letter was um, giving away trade secrets. That is not an effing trade secret. Okay? I'm not the cake baker. Having, cake baker. having no. cake, yeah. fake ass cakes for the past yeah. five effing years. But this yeah. person also thought we were really disrespectful and insulting to her um, mm-hmm. clients, which were not named and s- still remain unnamed. Oh my God. And uh, yeah, it was a big debacle. And, I, and it was one of our first, I mean, it was in the first couple months of- And it was just- like- the, the episode was just skyrocketing in downloads and we were both like, you know, virtual high-fiving, like we're doing it, Christy. Oh my God. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. And then Christy gets this letter. And I remember I was in Mexico city and you call me just like crying. You were so upset. Yeah. And I'm well, like, I'm upset. I was upset because 
I was being threat, like my livelihood was being threatened yeah. in that letter. And it was very much like, if you don't blah, 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 take this out, write letters of apology, formally notarized, oh blah, blah, all this huff and puff. And also I was upset because I'm a fucking nice person. Right. And I hated the idea, really, truly, genuinely hated the yeah. idea that I had hurt anybody's yeah. feelings. Yeah. Um, that oh lasted God. about a day and then I just was fucking pissed and <laughs> really like, really just like, this cannot happen this way. And Michelle and, and, uh, her husband who works on our podcast with a lot of the marketing stuff, they kind of drew, dug their heels in with me. Like, no, we're not going to go back and edit the shit out of that episode. No. But that was my instinct was like, just take all the parts out. Like, take it down, take it down. Be, I want this to be over. And you know, with a little bit of compromise, I think we took out like some incendiary. We did. We took comments. out a couple of parts that talked about the wedding and the bride. The bride. Yes, she, she, it was, who was more never her named ego. Yeah. So, wow. anyways, it was a big. It was a eye-opening. Like here we are, this little tiny podcast out of our bedroom closets, like, literally. And someone's threatening to sue me, and uh, you know, throwing around words like libel and slander, and ultimately, it was. Nothing because nothing. Yeah, I had our lawyer read it, and then there was another letter written back, and there we never heard from them again. But it it was like, like just like holy shit, are you kidding me? And we weathered it. I feel like we're better podcasters for having dealt with that. But it did not teach us a lesson about censoring ourselves. So that's that's that's, good, that's what's unique, you know, and that's what people like and. Kind of the same thing with me. Like, there's people that, um, you know, they're like, oh my God, you blah, 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 and cuss. And I'm like, I don't, I don't care. Like, the good outweighs the bad. And if you don't like it, then don't listen to it. Don't listen. It's a free podcast. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) Like, we're helping. And, and I mean, it's, it's the same way with, with planning clients and design clients. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys get this. There's always one every year where it's great and then they like turn and you know I never take it personal I think it's from working in healthcare and um doing a lot of psychology things um in mental health just learning about people and brain activity and triggers and I mean there's just so much so it's like you know even though I have had people say well I know you're talking about me and rah, 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 and I'm like well legally and what's trademarked mm-hmm. is this is as I remember it see so, you have such a sweet southern <laughs> way of saying it, but the but, but we had to say the same thing which was like I'm not lying if right. I'm lying <laughs> and you you know if you knew I was lying which I, I'm not but uh, there's a difference between an opinion and a straight up lie about someone so yeah. The other thing I've learned too is, um, you know, and again, this has taken a lot of coaching, but, um, there's a lot of negativity and trolls and trash, negative troll trash, negative trash trolls. That's what I meant. And, um, there are times where, um, you know, we just, we don't engage back and at all. And, and what are they going to do? What literally, I mean, they've left some negative reviews and, they mm-hmm. have called people on my podcast robots and that I'm a dumb blonde just that doesn't have anything better to do. And I'm like, well, I hope you make yourself feel better, but you're the dumbass that listens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> so it's like, you know, when I need to respond, I'll respond. But usually if it's a negative thing, I'm not even going to engage in, in the in the trash and the negativity. So that's just something that I've learned. And the more you get out there and the more you're in the public eye and the more you share and the more real you are, sometimes it seems like the worse it gets, but I promise it is doing more good than bad and you're not harming anyone. We're all nice people. Um, but if, if we don't help people, it's, it's like we're bottling up all these things inside and what good does that do? I mean, now that, you know, my dad's in heaven and he passed from cancer and he has all these amazing, crazy backwards stories from working in the railroad and all these illegal drugs going back and forth. And, 
it just, we talked about him doing a book. We talked about him doing a podcast. I never recorded his voice and I'm like the app fiend and I always have been ever since Apple was born. And I'm like, why did I not ever take the time to sit down and talk to him and record? And so now it's like my brother has somewhat followed in his footsteps and he's like, Ange, okay, I've been in business a year. I'm going to write the book. I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to I'm going to pitch something to Netflix and I'm like, okay, well, let's do one thing at one time and let's pick like one goal a year. You don't need to do all four in the next 12 months, <laughs> like overachiever, but it just makes you think differently whenever it's like, we're really truly trying to help people. So I yeah. love that. Don't yeah. ever stop. <laughs> that definitely underlies everything else that we're doing. So we do have to come back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. And I mean, I would say like, what is it that your clients love? But I feel like you guys answered that. I mean, your truth, you're honest, you're nice, you're fun. It's like you, you're certified, you know what you're doing. You've got some life experience, you back each other up. Um, and I'm sure that even though that you have your separate companies, if one of you needed to go somewhere or the other come the other place to help each other, like you're there to help each other. You've got each other's backks. Oh, hundred percent. So, I love that. I love um, how you guys have collaborated. What would you say is the biggest challenge other than people um, not seeing eye to eye, which sometimes, you know, it's just the miscommunication. Um, but what would you say is the number one challenge that you guys have experienced, like in starting the podcast, aside from people? <laughs> Time. Gotcha. I, you know, I... <laughs> It's funny because I've been doing this for two years. I spend so many hours editing. I do it myself. And pretty soon I'm going to look for somebody, but I, it takes a lot of time. But I have to say that it doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? Like, it's not this like, oh God, you know, I got to, oh, I still have to edit my podcast. Uh, it's more like, okay, I got to go edit my podcast. And I, and then I'll be, my husband laughs at me because I'll have my headphones on. I'll be like, doo, 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 and I'll just start cracking up laughing. And he's like, what? Are you laughing at yourself right now? <laughs> like, I'm like, no, you should have heard Christy. Oh my God, listen, listen. And I'll like rewind it. And he's like, you're such a dork. But I, I really, I love doing this. It That's is awesome. not work for me. It yeah. is something that I would love to be able to dedicate, you know, at some point full time doing this. I, I really, I really enjoy doing this. Um, but it, I would say the biggest challenge is that I have to spend my time doing other things where I want to be able to focus so much more uh, time and energy into building it. That would be my challenge. Yeah. If it ever gets, it's not always a, I get to do my podcast. Sometimes I am a little bit like dragging my feet because it's 11 p.m. and we still have to record or whatever, but it's never always a, I have to. Mm -hmm. If it ever gets to the point where either Michelle or I is to ourselves and to each other saying like, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this, we'll have to rethink yep. the, the partnership and, and the podcast itself because sure. we are, we are um, making steps in the right direction. Sometimes they feel like baby steps, but at least we're going in the right direction. We're not going backwards and we're not just staying, you know, in one place um, in terms of like downloads and exposure and connecting and, um, you know, having the opportunity to do live shows, which these opportunities are coming up. If, yeah. you know, if we were rewinding, it would be different. That, that has to, we have to keep moving forward. And we also have to keep liking weddings. I don't, I'm not interested in talking about something that I don't like. Um, and we have to like each other. We just spent five days together in Nashville face to face, like in the same room in the same car. We were not too often more than 10 feet away from each other. And that was a little bit of a test, I think, because we hadn't been, we had not seen each other in person for seven years prior to a eight. really short visit in San Francisco. Yeah. Eight yeah. years. So um, if, if it's ever like, I don't know. I mean, I, we have to like each other to do this. I don't want to do a podcast by myself. So our friendship and our dynamic has, uh, it's, 
it's, it's expanded. Flowed. Yeah, it's, it's it has evolved. It's grown. <laughs> um, it's blossomed. And that's really important because you can't fake that. I mean, we could talk, we could read stuff, we could talk, we could read from a script if we ever needed to just get a podcast out, but you can't fake actual love between two people and, or the ability to disagree or say like, okay, you see it that way, but I see it this way. And, you know, we'll give both sides to our listeners. Yeah. Um, so, it's, you know, we have to like each other. We have to like weddings and it has to be a get to most of the time. Yeah. What's your top piece of advice for anybody that wants to start a podcast? Oh, you, you go. <sighs> um, li- listen to, uh, so one of, uh, one of, uh, the, the, the podcasters that I, uh, respect and, uh, have listened to to start this show is Dan Benjamin. And he is, um, he's been podcasting since like when there was barely any podcasts out there and he has his own network. It's called five by five, five X five. Um, and we actually, uh, he, he, he was a programmer first and foremost back in the day. There is, he did put out a podcast that doesn't have any more new episodes, but they're all timeless called the podcast method. Uh, by Dan Benjamin. And we use, um, I started out on the beta version. When we started our podcast, he he started his own uh, hosting um, service called Fireside. And that's what we use. uh, That's where our podcast lives. Uh Um, And it's fantastic. And he's a podcaster. So he really is constantly updating it. He knows how to talk to us. He's, we have a Slack channel. He actually personally answers us. The guy has, I don't even know how many podcasts he's, he's pretty friggin' awesome. Um, so listen to Dan Benjamin, uh, the podcast, podcast method. And, and also I really recommend, I think for me, this is me personally, hands on doing a lot of it yourself, um, understanding how it works, the, the technology of it. And, you know, I can't tell you how many times I thought I've lost content. I lost audio and I wanted to pull my hair out and I was having mm-hmm. panic attacks and my husband had to like hold me and do you like, it's okay. Just let's look at this. this. I've, how many times have I texted you, Christy? Like, oh, yeah, my yeah. God. you know, like, I don't want to do. Um, I, I think I, Personally, this is the kind of personality that I have, and I want to do your true colors thing, Angela, but yeah. I feel like my hands have to be in it to understand it sure. and, 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 and do good at it. But, and then the other thing is like, just be you, be mm-hmm. authentic. If you have something to say and you have a message, say it as you don't put on a persona or personality. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think even going back when you hear yourself for the first time, it's really weird. <laughs> You know, a lot of people, you know what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about, you guys listening, like you hate hearing your voice sometimes. So I will go back and listen to our first episodes and be like, oh God, why did I sound like that? What was it like? (laughs) Um, But I remember the pilot episode that I recorded, I recorded it in my car on my iPhone and my husband, I I recorded it first on my computer and my microphone. My husband's like, that's not you. You're not being you. Just go, go you got to keep going back to the drawing board. So I just like got in the car, put on GarageBand on my phone and recorded a two minute, like, this is what we're about while I was driving around and he heard it and he's like, that's you, that's you. Um, so be you. That's yeah. Awesome. And, and just mine is way shorter than that, but just to piggyback because Michelle came at it from a very academic standpoint to like, I'm going to learn how to do this. And one of us had to, otherwise this never would have happened. (laughs) But like listening to Dan Benjamin, I'll listen to it because she sends me episodes. Like you have to listen to this and I'll listen to them. But I'm like in the car or I'm vacuuming at home. I'm doing something else. I think I'm absorbing some of the good stuff, but Michelle was taking notes and then applying them and then trying out what Dan said and like reading what was on his blog and inputting it into her garage band. You know, she was actually studying it, the art of podcasting. Yeah. So you have to do that. I mean, somebody has to do that. And then for us, we, we talk to my brother-in-law is a really successful uh, comedy podcaster. Like they've been doing it forever, big time, millions of followers. He actually makes a really good living doing it, but we asked him and his piece of advice to both of us was like, if you guys want to do this, 
you have to just do it. Yep. Like, just do it. Open up your computers, get the mics out, and just record, record, record. And if you put them up on iTunes, trust that as long as you're having fun, and he's like, and you don't expect to get paid initially, yeah. you have to do it because you love it. But trust that if you're having fun putting it out there, that people are going to listen. Yeah. And it took a little bit of time and it trickled in. We were counting like, we got 50 more downloads. We got 60 more downloads. <laughs> and now, you know, we've reached a level where we have sponsors and people are more interested and we know we're going to get a certain amount of numbers for every episode. But you know, his advice and my advice to anyone who says like, I think I want to do a podcast would be like, get out your computer then right now and record some stuff. Your brother, Angela, if he's got these amazing stories, right? Just yeah. put them out there. Yep. See what happens. Once you start. If you, you know, build it, they will come. Once you start, the ball will roll. That's we have, we're, right. we're full of this stuff, you guys. That's right. Well, I, I could talk to you girls all day. I have I know. to run to my next appointment. But before we go, tell our listeners where they can find you to listen to your podcast. Christy, that's your outro. Yes, we are the Big Wedding Planning Podcast. So you can get our uh, episodes from our website, thebigweddingplanningpodcast.com. We're on iTunes, Stitcher. You can ask Alexa for us, the Big Wedding Planning Ooh. Podcast. Podcast. You have to say podcast twice, guys. Alexa wants to hear it twice. Alexa, um, play the Big Wedding Planning Podcast podcast. See, that's we probably weird. just turned on 17 turned Alexas. On. Um, we're Instagram. We put up... Uh, graphics for every episode we do. And we do um, pretty um, thorough show notes on our website with quotes and tips. Everything's written out that we talked about. Um, Instagram is at the big wedding planning podcast. You can email us at the big wedding planning podcast at gmail.com. And we're also on Facebook and Twitter, TBWP podcast and Spotify and Google play. See, I don't even know. The Big Wedding everywhere. Planning Podcast. The Big Wedding Planning Podcast. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, ladies, for being on. And we will let our audiences and our listeners know when y'all's coming out and then when y'all are in Nashville coming out and they'll have to... Yes, we've got quite a few interviews from you out there in Nashville. We had so much fun and... Um, we really, really did enjoy that Southern hospitality. I can't wait to go back and have barbecue and hot chicken. And tater tots. Yes, yeah. tater tots. Tater tots were everywhere, Angela. What the yes. heck? So, oh, yeah. I love tater tots. <laughs> Loaded tater tots with like bacon and cheese anyway. <laughs> now I'm hungry. It's dinner time. Yes, yes. Well, ladies, thank you so much for being on. And to all of our amazing listeners, I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Be sure to check us out next week on Weddings Unveiled. Have a great day. Bye. 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 If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list. And if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.